Welcome back, Beaver Nation, to another edition of the Beaver Sports Show. Joining me once again is Alex Crawford, and I'm Boone Kruger. Well, it's certainly a great weekend for the men's basketball team as they travel to Eugene and snap their 13-game conference road losing streak. Coming up, Alex and I will break down what the Beavers need to do to keep the ball rolling against Colorado and Utah. The women's basketball team picked up a huge win at home on Saturday at Gill Coliseum against the University of Oregon, and the Oregon State track team kicked off their season up north at the Husky Invitational. And yesterday marked a huge day in the year of college football as thousands of high school seniors signed their letters of intent to play college football next season. Mike Riley signed his 11th recruiting class of his career here at Oregon State, and it's perhaps his best ever. You're watching the Beaver Sports Show. Stay tuned. From the KBVR TV studio on the campus of Oregon State University, this is the Beaver Sports Show. The first home Civil War basketball game of the year took place last Saturday when the Beavers women took on the University of Oregon. Led by freshman Allie Gibson, who had 23 points, the Beavers defeated the Ducks 67-60. With more, here's Sports Show reporter David Raymer. The women's basketball team welcomed the Ducks to Gill Coliseum this past Saturday for the first leg of the Civil War. Heading into the game, the Beavers were 4-5 in the Pac-12 and 12-7 and overall. With a win, the Beavers could crack into the top half of the conference standings. For Alicia Marchbanks, Patricia Bright, Allie Gibson, and the rest of the Lady Beavers in front of a large crowd look to keep their momentum going against U of O after an overtime victory in Los Angeles against USC. The Lady Beavers look to recreate the magic of last year's Civil War when they came back from a 20-point deficit to defeat U of O. The Ducks, who lost four of their last six, were looking to top the Beavers on the road. The Beavs shot 40% from the field in the first half, but the Ducks kept it close by sinking 30% of their three-pointers in a tightly contested first half. After the Ducks built up an eight-point lead to begin the second half, Allie Gibson came alive. She hit four of the Beavers' seven three-pointers that fueled a 19-7 run to put the Beavers over the top. Allie scored a career-high 23 points in the Beavers' Civil War victory. Three-pointers were a plenty in this Civil War. Throughout the game, there were combined 63-point attempts. Four of the five starters for the Beavers all scored in double figures. Junior Patricia Bright earned her second career double-double with 11 points, 12 rebounds, with four blocks. While Sage and Dendy scored a season high of 14 points. The Lady Beavers topped the Ducks in the Civil War 67-60. to After the game, Coach Scott Ruick had this to say. Um, I mean, it was just a battle of a game. Um, it was, what, you know, more of a defensive battle than I probably think anybody could have predicted. Um, frustrating, to be honest, for a long time. You know, I, I was so proud of our defense. I was so proud of our defensive transition. Followed the game plan. We had very few mistakes. Um, but on the offensive end, you know, their zone really gave us trouble. They did a great job executing and taking away anything easy. Uh, you know, and then this game turned into a three-point shooting contest. You know, and then at one point I thought, you know, I don't know if we can win one of those against Oregon. You know, but it turns out we did. You know, so... Uh, it was also, I mean, just an incredible atmosphere. You know, the most people we've played in front of at home, so proud of our fans for coming out and supporting us the way they did. They created an awesome home court. You know, credit Oregon for playing the game they did, and so proud of our team for gutting it out when there was a point where we certainly could have folded uh, in this game. They had total control, seven-ish minutes, you know, and then we just picked up the D, and we, we had people running on, you know, dead tired legs, and they gutted it out and hit big shots down the stretch and got stops. Thanks, David. The Oregon State men's basketball team snapped their 13-game conference road losing streak last Sunday against rival Oregon as they beat the Ducks 76-71. to With the win, the Beavers won their third straight conference game and improved their record to 14-7 overall and 4-5 and in league play. After a slow start to the game for the Beavers that saw them score a season-low 23 points in the first half, Oregon State surged in the second half, scoring 53 points. Junior guard Jared Cunningham led the way for the Beavers as he scored 27 points, grabbed seven rebounds, and dished out three assists. The Beavers travel to Colorado and Utah this week with a lot of momentum as they sit three games back from first place and only two games back from second place Colorado. 
Well, it was certainly an impressive victory for the Beavers last Sunday as they beat the Ducks in the 336th edition of the Civil War. Alex, what did you take away from that game, especially in the second half? Well, I mean, uh, first time they won a road conference game since 2009, so that's huge. Like I said last week, you know, Craig Robinson said the key to getting your first road win, or I'm sorry, the key to winning games on the road is getting your first road win. So they got that, so that monkey's off their back. They're good to go there. Obviously, they're going to need to pick up that momentum. But I don't know. I saw a stretch, you know, right around the 13-minute mark um, when the Beavs, they, they had come back to, you know, tie it or be right there. All of a sudden, uh, what's his name from Joseph from the Ducks? He hits three threes in a row. The Ducks start to take the lead. And in the past, we've seen the Beavers team collapse right there, kind of fall apart. Um, but no, then they played some of their best basketball. I've seen them play all season, took the game over, and ended up winning. So I don't know. I just I saw the Beavers finally do what they need to do to win a road game. It was it's definitely a, a gut check game for Oregon State in the second half. As, like you said, past Beaver teams from previous years would have fallen apart after a poor first half like they had. But Jared Cunningham came up huge, like you said he would. Uh, you called it out for the MVP last week. And also, Eric Moreland had a, he had a career high in steals with four against the Ducks. And surprisingly, the Beavers, they were able to put together a complete defensive game, something they hadn't really done in conference play up till this point. With this momentum that they have, they have a three-game uh, conference uh, winning streak. How do they go into Colorado and get a win against the Buffaloes, who are 14 and seven overall and six and three in conference play? Do they keep doing what they did in the second half with that defensive pressure? Absolutely. I mean, obviously they're going to have to build on this momentum. They've got some momentum, and Colorado. You know, I think they're six and three in conference. They're sitting there at second place, but they're a very beatable team for the Beavers. I think the Beavers. Um, can win this game. They got to have a, a complete defensive game just again. Although Colorado did beat them last season, Angus Brandt said, you know, we're a totally different team. This is a totally different game. So I think they got to stick to the same game plan they did against the Ducks. The question is, how much zone are we going to see? Are we going to see a lot of 1 3 1 again, or are we going to see more man to man? What do you think they need to do? Well, with the way the Beavers, well, I should say prior to the game against the Ducks, I thought the Beavers should go more man to man, but then the 1 3 1 worked out so well in the Civil War. So I think really what Craig Robinson's going to do is he's going to mix it up. The, how the game goes early on is what we're going to see the Beavers, whether they decide to go man-to-man -man or play that 1-3-1 zone, because really that zone worked great against the Ducks. And Eric Moreland at the one spot in that zone just causes nightmares for the opposing teams. Yeah, he's long. He's a lanky, a lanky fellow. And he causes, like you said, nightmares. Um, and Colorado, they're a team that likes to run. Uh, but the Beavers are a team that likes to run even more. The Beavers are fourth in the nation in scoring, um, and you know they're top five in steals, I believe, as well. So I think, and another similarity between Oregon and Colorado is they're both very experienced teams, mm -hmm. um, and the Beavers showed they could beat an experienced team in Oregon. So I think we're going to see possibly a similar game to the one we saw against Oregon. Um, but I think I do think the Beavers can pull out this win, and it'd be huge because you know. Like Robinson said, oh, the key to winning road games is winning your first road game. Then you win your second road game. All of a sudden, you're going into Utah on a two-game road winning streak, four-game conference winning streak, and that's so big for us right now. We really have a chance to come back and make a surge towards the end of conference play. That's definitely true. The Beavers have hit their kind of the hot streak that at the right time going into the last nine games of conference play. The Beavers play at 6 p.m. Uh, tonight. And uh, there's no TV, unfortunately, but you can listen to the game on 1240 Joe Radio with Mike Parker making the call. Well, we'll have more of the Beaver Sports Show after this quick commercial break. Let's take a look at some highlights. The meet started a little differently than it has earlier this year, with freshman Chelsea Tang not competing due to an elbow injury. Tang competed all around last week, which led to shuffling in the lineup for this meet. OSU started the night off strong on vault. Kelsey Blaylock scored a career high of 9.950 to take first place on vault. The other top performers were Brittany Harris with a 9.875, and Michaela Stambaugh with a 9.850. They finished the vault performance with a season best score of 48.975.
OSU went into the second rotation on bars with a small lead over Stanford. Bernie Harris received a 9.8 with her routine, followed by Stambaugh and Mack, both receiving a 9.875. Olivia Vivian took first on bars with a new season high of 9.925. The Beavers moved into the third rotation with a lead over Stanford of 98.225 to 97.825. Next up for the Beavers was the Bean. Leslie Mack tied for first on Bean with a score of 9.925. Harris scored a 9.875. Melanie Jones and Vivian both scored a 9.825. The Beavers scored a season high on Beam as well with a 49.250 with all Beaver gymnasts receiving high scores. Moving into the final rotation, the Beavers continued their lead over Stanford 147.475 to 146.575. Blaylock tied her career best with a score of 9.825. Harris scored a 9.775. Both Mack and Jones scored a 9.9, .9, and Stambaugh finished the night off with a season best of 9.925. The Beavers finished with 196.800 over Stanford's 194.525. The Beavers went 1-2-3 in the all-around competition, Stambaugh finishing first with Mack and Harris falling closely behind. We had a chance to catch up with Brittany Harris after the meet. Okay, I'm here with Brittany Harris. How did it feel getting third place in the all-around tonight? Um, it really felt amazing. It was so like, fun to be back here in Gill and at home with the crowd. And I just did what we did. We all just did what we did in practice, and it felt good to be here again. What was the crowd like for you guys tonight? Amazing, unbelievable. They are the best part of Gill, and it wouldn't be as fun without them. All right, and what are you guys looking forward to for your next meet? How are you going to keep the ball rolling? Take the same energy we have from Gill and take it to any away week we have and just do our best. All right, awesome. Great job tonight. We wish you guys the best. Thank you. So that's another win for the OSU gymnasts here in Gill Coliseum. We look forward to their next meet against UW in Seattle. Back to you guys. Over the weekend, the OSU track team kicked off their season up north at the Husky Invitational. Senior Laura Carlisle and freshman Brandon Cooks set school records in the mile and 60 meter dash. With more on this, here is Sports Show reporter Allie Cook. This past weekend, the track and field team kicked off their 2012 season up in Seattle, Washington for the Husky Invitational hosted by the University of Washington. It was a big weekend for the Beavers as both Laura Carlisle and Brandon Cook set new school records. Laura Carlisle finished the one mile run with a time of 4 minutes, 46.92 seconds, placing third in section 2. Brandon Cooks competed in the 60 meter dash where he finished second overall with a time of 6.81 seconds. This was Cook's first appearance for the track team. Other OSU highlights include Marsha Lampy and Sabra Dubois who both competed in the 3000 meter run, placing fifth and twelfth with times of 10 minutes. 1.97 seconds and 10 minutes 47.19 seconds. There were also several Beavers who had personal bests this weekend, which include Kenzie Gomez, Gomez, who finished the one mile run in ninth place with a time of four minutes 59.48 seconds, and Kristen Oning, who competed in the high jump with a mark of five feet 3.75 inches. Also competing in high jump was Oboom Watcham, who finished fifth with a mark of six feet 9.75 inches. The Beavers will return to Seattle again on February 10th for the Husky Invitational. To stay up to date on Beaver track and field, you can visit osubeavers.com. Thanks, Allie. It was an exciting week around the Pac-12 conference. Joining us once again with a look around the conference is sports show reporter Jenna Laid. The standings have changed this week as Oregon has been booted off the top spot in the conference following their loss to the Beavers this past Sunday, being replaced by Washington alongside Cal. But their positions aren't guaranteed as two games separate the top seven teams in the league race. With Oregon now at third place and Colorado at fourth, these top four teams will need to take care of business on the road as each will have five conference away games left. And coming up this weekend, we have third place Oregon and fourth place Colorado going head to head in Boulder and the top team Cal defending their home court against Arizona State. When it comes to Pac-12 Player of the Week, our very own Jared Cunningham took the title. Cunningham posted 27 points against the Ducks on Sunday, making three of six three-pointers and going 12 for 15 from the free throw line. He also had three assists, a steal, and seven rebounds that game. He also became Oregon State's 36th player in school history to score 1,000 career points. This is Cunningham's second Pac-12 Player of the Week honor and the 42nd all-time selection for Oregon State. 
Well, the first Wednesday of February is always a big day in college football as high school seniors sign their national letters, letters of intent to go play college football for the next season. Alex, what do you make of this class, and do you have any names that you think will be big players in the future for Oregon State? Uh, well, first off, big props to Mike Riley and his coaching staff for finally getting a class that even was getting some national attention in the past. You know, we really haven't gotten those big name recruits, and we're very rarely ever mentioned at all in, you know, I mean, all, we didn't finish in the top 25 nationally, but we were being mentioned in the top 30 at times. So that's very rare. So big props to them. Although if there is a coach who can come in and take three-star, two-star recruits, random guys from Houston, Texas, who end up becoming James Rogers to Quiz Rogers, I mean, it's Mike Riley and his staff. Um, and then, you know, a couple names that stood out. Well, first of all, I'm a big fan of any junior college guy that's coming in here. Those guys, they're ready to play. Obviously, if they're playing at the JC level, that's competitive. Um, and that's something Dennis Erickson did in the past, was bring in JC guys who ended up making a big difference. You know, Chad Johnson, TJ Hushmanzada, guys like that. Um, but, you know, Cade Cowden, Dylan Moffey, those are two linebackers that we picked up from JC. Those guys are going to make a difference. Obviously, our defense was, you know, needs some big improvements. Linebackers could always use help. So those guys, those guys could look to make a difference early, as well as Stan Haziak, I believe is how you say his last name. Uh, he's an offensive lineman coming in out of Hawaii. He did play a little at UCLA. Um, he's got two years left. He's a JC transfer, so he could look to make a big impact. I'm a big fan of all those JC guys right there. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to help out the depth at the linebacker and offensive line position. Mike Riley expects them to play or see the field next year. And so it's great that you know a guy like Cade Cowden is already enrolled into school and will be participating in spring ball. Another guy that pops out and to me is uh, Tyler Hasty, a cornerback from Newcastle, Washington. Coach Riley compared him to Jordan Poyer, which is pretty high praise. Um, so this class, while Mike Riley hasn't been known to bring in highly regarded classes, he's, like you said, turned two star guys into great players. This class, the stars are there. Uh, the Beavers got the number one offensive guard in the country in Isaac Sumalo, whose dad is also happens to be the defensive line coach for Oregon State. So really a great class altogether. I think offensively they brought in a lot of quality players, not necessarily quantity, but more quality as they only brought in one running back and one quarterback. Yeah, we brought in some guys that look like they could really help us anchor down that offensive line, um, which was a big problem this last season for us was, you know, some – offensive line issues, so obviously Sayamalu is going to make an impact right away, um, a top 150 nationally recruit, so that's huge. Um, and then, yeah, Tyler Hasty, we need some help at the defensive back position without a doubt. Him along with, I believe, Zach Robinson is coming in as an athlete, um, and he, he was playing some defensive back as well as wide receiver in high school, so he's another guy that could look to help out in the defensive back area, which is a huge area we need to improve in. So overall, really pumped on this year's recruiting class. And, um, yeah, I think we could see all these guys make an impact next season. Well, it'll certainly be exciting to see some of them in uniform for spring practice, but we'll definitely be seeing all of them uh, come August during fall camp. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. On behalf of Alex Crawford and everyone here at the Beaver Sports Show, I'm Boone Kruger. Hope you have a great night, and we'll see you back here next week.